each speaker may take up to five minutes to address the board, and each speaker may not reflect adversely on individuals. If a parent or community member has a complaint about an employee, it should be referred to the employee's supervisor. Those wishing to address the board on agenda items only may sign up at the podium prior to the start of the meeting. Tonight's forum to address the board concerning non-agenda items will include only those who had signed up by noon earlier today with the superintendent's office. These will take place at the end of tonight's agenda. As a reminder, public participation is an opportunity for the community to address the board in a formal setting. However, it is not designed or intended to be interactive. While we greatly appreciate individuals engaging with us, we expect the administrative and building level staff to work cooperatively with the community to address items discussed. We also request that audience members be respectful of each participant and the process. We thank you for attending tonight's Board of Education meeting and for your support for our school system. Please rise and join me in the pledge. Allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Elections call the September 12, 2022, regular meeting of the Southwestern City School Board to order. Roll call. Mr. Boso. Uh, here. Mr. Caldwell. Here. Ms. Martindale. Here. Mr. Gunner. Here. Ms. Johnson. Here. Next, we need a motion to adopt tonight's agenda. So move, Shriner. Thank you. We need a second. Second. Sure. Are there any additions to the agenda? Seeing none, roll call. Mr. Schreiner? Yes. Mr. Caldwell? Yes. Mr. Boso? Uh, yes. Ms. Martindale? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Now we need a motion to approve the minutes from August 22nd. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Caldwell. We need a second. No, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Martindale. Are there any corrections to those? Seeing none, roll call. Mr. Caldwell? Yes. Ms. Martindale? Yes. Mr. Poso? Yes. Mr. Schreiner? Yes. Ms. John? Yes. Uh, so well, this evening we have a presentation by Dr. Lusher on the open schools. Good evening, President Johnson, Vice President Caldwell, members of the Board of Education, Dr. Wise, and Mr. Garside. I'm so pleased to have the opportunity to share with you the opening of schools update. On August 24th, we officially kicked off the 2022-23 school year. After much anticipation and planning, we were thrilled to have had a successful, joyous, and productive start to the school year. As we welcome our students, staff, and families, our mission is to ensure that each and every individual feels safe, seen, and heard, knowing in an authentic and meaningful way that we are so glad that you're here. As educators, we know that if you can't experience something firsthand, the brain is designed to remember things in pictures and stories. So tonight I share with you a small story captured by Mr. DeBeau and Ms. Ackerman um, to show you a little bit of what it was like the first few days as we opened up our doors to our students and staff. So if you'll indulge us for a few minutes. start um, and it takes a team of committed and dedicated educators to pull something like this off. As you know, the scale of our organization is large. Um, I have the privilege of sharing their work, but I would be remiss if I didn't thank our entire team 
from the custodians that helped us open in Herculean ways for our new middle schools to the buses and the transportation department, communications, our personnel department that continues to hire and recruit even now, technology, our executive directors that are problem solving every day, all things teaching and learning, facilities, custodians, maintenance, uh, thank you, because we've had a great start. So first, let's now move to teaching and learning. Um, prior to school even starting, we had over 800 students walk through our doors to practice skills and routines to make sure that they were set up for success. Uh, many of you saw that we welcomed over 100 new staff members to greet our students um, and start our year off right. We also honored a staggered start for our K-3 students. Um, this allows them a safe and a smooth transition and gives them individualized attention as they start their year. Um, this is very exciting. The diagnostic assessments in many districts that I've been a part of, um, we, we don't get those done until October. We already have diagnostic assessments happening now, which means that teachers are learning about uh, the students' levels and being able to meet them where they are instructionally. So it's very exciting. And then also, um, as you can see, we've expanded our support services to students uh, with counselors in our elementaries, uh, nine additional student support liaisons, and seven additional social workers to help our K-8 program as well. As we look at enrollment, um, it is what we anticipated. Amazingly, uh, our projections are 99% accurate with just a few changes that are expected, notable exceptions across the district. So you can see Buckeye Woods is up a bit, Prairie Lincoln is down a bit, Galloway Ridge is down a bit, um, and Jackson Middle is up a bit. Transportation, this still boggles my mind. We travel over 15,000 miles a day. Our bus fleet is 210 strong. We have 182 drivers and recruiting substitutes as we speak. Um, 12,000, over 12,000 riders. Um, this is down a little bit, interestingly, and we think maybe because of um, increased flexibility with parent work schedules, we're seeing more parents drop off and pick up. So we've had to make some adjustments with our parent pick up and drop off lines. Um, and again, we honored another first time rider event. This was our second year, which was a tremendous success to see uh, the, the transportation department working closely with our new families um, to welcome them. It's also a great time to fill out free reduced lunch forms um, for teachers and for administrators to meet uh, the new kindergartners. So that was a great event. And then excitingly, we have a new um, software package called TransFinder which hopefully by you know, late fall, we'll be able to roll out some additional supports to our families so they get up to the minute information about where their child is and route either to school or coming home from school. So we're very really excited about that. I wanna thank transportation and technology for working through some of those hiccups because it's been a pretty big undertaking. Food services, you can see here, Lisa Hamrick does a great job for us. Um, she's included our daily averages for breakfast and for our lunches. Um, as you know, the federal uh, waivers ended uh, this year. So we've been really pushing out the free and reduced lunch forms to make sure that our students um, have the, the, the nutrition that they need. These are our meal costs this year. And we put those up there because they have remained static since about 2017. Um, but just be advised that due to federal regulations, we may have to look at adjusting those in the next year or so to meet the federal regulations because they have stayed static since 2017. Um, and again, we're strongly encouraging our parents to continue to complete those free and reduced lunch forms. Um, this is a really great slide. I love this because it just shows how much community support. When you look at the number of entities that we have across our community supporting all things in education, it really is inspiring. Um, on the 16th, this Friday, we'll be honoring uh, the city of Grove City. Um, you can see we've had military appreciation nights that are planned, one we already had. Uh, the Arts in the Alley Parade this weekend, a Saturday morning, if you're not doing anything. We have our Council of PTAs night coming up on the 27th. And then importantly, we continue to partner with our, our local fire and law, uh, police and law enforcement agencies. We meet monthly um, to continue to make sure that our safety protocols and our systematic approach to safety and security is where we would like it to be. So actually, our next meeting is coming up. Uh, Mr. Dediman and I will meet with them on the 14th. Lastly, and this is very exciting, um, you know, we know that second only to food, shelter, sense of belonging matters. Um, we are a purpose-driven profession. One of the things that we're excited to announce that we are going to be engaging in the 2023 um, Top work, Workplaces uh, program. We're going to be surveying our staff about, you know, unpacking why they like to come to work, what makes Southwestern special to be able to capitalize on some of those asset-based features as a part of our recruitment and retention. So we look forward to that. So we're hopeful that we can participate and then hopefully maybe get that accreditation as one of the top places to work. Any questions for me or our team? So I have one question. Um, 
I know that we've had trouble hiring bus drivers and transportation has always been an issue. Uh, how is that going so far? I know I've heard from like one parent that's frustrated with some, you know, times getting to school. Um, how's that? So we actually, in terms of, we have all of our positions filled. Uh, where we are thin are subs. So we've had high attendance, uh, high absence, absentee levels at the beginning of the school year. So it's higher than we anticipated. So we're working to fill those. So what you're seeing, I believe in Monty, correct me if I'm wrong, it's really because we've had folks call off and we don't have as large of a sub pool as we'd like to have. So we're continuing to recruit. So if you know anybody, send them our way. And then the trains finder, when do we think that'll be rolled out? You know, our hope is the end of October, beginning of November. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Next, we have board reports. Seeing none, uh, we have no public participation relative to agenda items. So we'll move now to Mr. Caldwell on the legislative liaison report. Thank you, President Johnson. Good evening, everybody. Uh, <clears throat> I'll be relatively short on the legislative update, mostly because it's been summer and this is the state legislature has not been in session. Uh, but a couple of things the uh, State Committee on Computer Science met at the end of August to come up with what they uh, were tasked to do under House Bill 110, which is come up with a new primary and secondary education plan for computer science. Um, that uh, link will be available in the minutes that we share after the meeting. Uh, the State Board of Education is, uh, their budget committee is working on their 24-25 budget priorities, uh, and they put together a draft priorities uh, document that is on their website, but also included in the minutes that I share with Mr. Garside uh, following this meeting. Um, the, the leaders in both the House and the Senate have canceled their if needed sessions for September, uh, and so we will not see any more action probably until after the November election. Um, in the House and the Senate for the state of Ohio, which means we'll have a busy lame duck period uh, come November and December. Uh, and then lastly, um, Representative Adam Miller and Representative Juanita Brent uh, introduced the Educational Regional Service Systems uh, Bill to include services related to reading and literacy services for English learners. Uh, and that has yet to have the first hearing, but it's House Bill 719. So that concludes tonight's legislative report. Moving now to student and staff achievement, Mrs. Martindale. Thank you. So I, I also have a short report tonight to do with the curriculum change. It's uh, at the end of the day. But we have two awesome student achievements that I would like to highlight this evening. Um, after placing first in team competition at Ohio Skills USA Championship in Columbus in May, uh, Southwestern Career Academy Juniors, Chloe Garcia. Jordan Fleming, uh, Adam Bola, Akin Boyade, Nemo Nassim, Giselle Argueta, and Jessica Aponza um, all uh, advanced, oh, I'm sorry, also McKinsey side, I'm sure, advanced to the National Leadership and Skills Conference in Atlanta, Georgia in June. Uh, the team of students are from Multi Skilled Health and Dental Escaping Program. They competed in the contest area attended a pre-conference professional development activity, observed other competitions, and visited the Skills USA Texpo, one of the largest trade shows in the country. Students also participated in community service projects uh, for the Atlanta Kids Club and the Children's Site. So they have many achievements on several different levels. Uh, and then West, uh, Westland High School senior vocalist, uh, Zach Isles, has been named the Ohio All-State Choir uh, by the Ohio Music uh, Education Association and annually uh, solicits applications in the form of a recorded solo. Uh, and so he was selected based on his vocal ability, tone quality, and range. So congratulations to Zach. For our... Um, Southwestern City School District gives back as a part of their annual fall and winter service project. Members of Westland High School Student Council assembled and donated approximately 200 emergency kits filled with uh, hygiene items and school supplies uh, to be distributed to children and teenagers in the foster system uh, within the Kearney County Children's Service. These bags consisted of toothbrushes, toothpaste, comb, shampoo, deodorant, and other personal care items. 
They also have two supplies, such as markers, pens, pencils, binders, glue, scissors, eraser, rulers, and various other items. The circus project was spearheaded by uh, senior Marcy, Marcy Schultz, uh, who is also the president of the student council there at Westland, and who said uh, that these fall service pro projects are really important, um, and a very important undertaking for the club because it allows them to step outside of the school and um, participate. Thank them for all that they do. And that wraps up my student and staff achievement. Thank you very much. Moving on now to items for action, fiscal and operational management, Mr. Boso. Thank you, Madam President. Under fiscal and operational management, we have seven items on the um, action item. Um, the first is revised uh, permanent appropriations for fiscal year 2022-2023. That will be exhibit X1. It is recommended the Board of Education approve the revised permanent <coughs> appropriations. Um, item number two, an investment and financial statements for all of 2022, exhibit X2 and X3. It's recommended the accordance with section 135.14 of the higher revised code. The Board of Education approved the August investments um, and cash position report for the month of August 2022 as submitted. Total investments. $383,232,008.68. Interest earnings month to date, $542,215.71. Interest earnings year to date, $1,022,528. Um, interest rates have gone up a little bit, thank goodness. 0.17% <laughs> to 3.04%. Um, item number three, the payment of bills, Exhibit X4, is recommended the Board of Education approve the payments of bills according to the list of checks for the month of August 2022. Um, donations is item number four, Exhibit X5, it's recommended the Board of Education accept the donations of $935 as detailed in Exhibit X5 and authorize letters of appreciation to be sent to the donors. Donations are always appreciated. Item number five is authorization to pay the bills in accordance with section 5705.41 of the higher revised code exhibit F X6. It is recommended the Board of Education authorize the treasurer to pay the bills for August, which were not processed in accordance with section 5705.41 of the higher revised code. Um, item number six is agreement with CCPCC Operations LLC. It's recommended the Board of Education enter into agreement with, which is the Coca Cola Bottling Company Consolidated, uh, to become the district's exclusive beverages uh, beverage provider for the September 1st, 2022 through August 31st of 2023. Of, um, that'll be Exhibit X7. Um, item number seven, the agreement with Buckeyes Boys Ranch is recommended the Board of Education enter an agreement with the Buckeyes Boys Ranch Incorporated to provide services of a licensed mental health therapist to serve at the uh, Finland Health uh, Finland Middle School for the 2022-2023 school year exhibit X8. These um, funds will be paid out from Title I funds. Um, after reviewing these items, Madam President, I move them for passage. Thank you. We need a second. Second, Shriner. Thank you, Mr. Shriner. Any questions, comments? Seeing none, roll call. Mr. Boso? Uh, yes. Mr. Shriner? Yes. Mr. Caldwell? Yes. Ms. Martindale? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. <clears throat> and now, Mr. Shriner with personnel. Thank you, President Johnson. On the board agenda for this evening are eight personnel items involving 251 persons. This includes eight certificated resignations, 15 certificated changes in employment status, 148 certificated employments, 17 classified resignations, 12 classified changes in employment status, and 51 classified employments. Also included is a request for modification of the Southwestern City School District 2022-2023 calendar. This change enables the district's Ohio Association of Public School Employees, OPSI, 
bargaining unit the opportunity to engage in their annual OPC Day Central District event on October 21st as outlined in their negotiated agreement. This move follows similar calendar adjustments made by neighboring schools in recent weeks for the 2022-2023 school year. Additionally, it is recommended that the Board of Education approve a request for an increase to the substitute rate for a long-term substitute teacher assignment. After reviewing these items, I move them for passage. Thank you. We need a second. So, Mr. Caldwell, questions or comments? Seeing none, roll call. Mr. Schreiner? Yes. Mr. Caldwell? Yes. Mr. Boso? Yes. Ms. Martindale? Yes. Now, public speaking relative to non agenda items. Mr. Bob Bruce? My name is Bob Luth. I've been a tax paying homeowner in the Southwestern City School District for 50 years. During that half century, I and my wife have paid more than $80,000 in property taxes toward financing Southwestern schools. We have willingly paid these taxes because we both believe there is nothing more important to the future of our society, to the future of our state and nation for that matter, than the public education of our children. That's why I was distressed by the August 8th vote of Chris Bozo and Kelly Martindale against the so-called voucher project litigation. This lawsuit filed in January challenges the skyrocketing amount of tax money used to support private schools in Ohio. This worrisome trend shifts much needed tax money away from public school districts like Southwestern. Instead, these tax dollars go to for-profit charter schools, parochial schools, and other private schools. Mr. Bozo and Ms. Martindale, your no votes last month indicate both of you support this continuing and outrageous shift in school funding. Excuse me, Madam President, are we not supposed to speak negatively towards members of this board? And so with that said, I'm just putting that out there. Seems very respectful to me. You can make acceptable your okay. elected members of the board. And oh, I can handle it. It's no problem. I just thought we were never supposed to speak ill will of any members. I tell you what, I'll, I, I won't mention your names anymore. I'll just mention your votes. Bob, okay? um, you will get to be no, no. <laughs> I love you here. <laughs> well, no, the next couple of paragraphs do mention my <laughs> I have a, I have a simple question for both of you. Why in the world are you members of a school board that oversees public education? Private schools have their own boards of education. Why don't you both join one of those school boards instead of a public education uh, school board like Southwestern. I can understand uh, the vote of one, the no vote of one of the members last month. After all, she was and still might be heavily involved in a startup private school. But the other person who voted no mystifies me. Last month, this person mentioned that his 15 year old daughter attends a Southwestern school. Doesn't he realize the shift of tax dollars away from Southwestern schools to private schools is taking money away from his own daughter's education? I was also mystified by the reasons this person gave for voting against the voucher project litigation. For some reason, this person talked about all sorts of cultural war stuff that had nothing to do with school funding. Here's a little advice from someone who's either reported on or participated in politics for 45 years. Don't worry so much about the cultural wars of fear, anger, and misinformation 
that are used by unscrupulous politicians to get out the vote in congressional and presidential elections. And that's all this stuff is all about. Instead, worry more about the public education of our children right here in Southwestern City School District. In January, I expressed to this board my misgivings about the election of these two no voters. I told both of them, back then I would give them the benefit of the doubt in the hope that they would moderate their views. Unfortunately for the children of this school district, my misgivings about these two appears to be prescient. Thank you. to items for discussion. Are there any board items for discussion? Yes, I do have some, Madam President. Um, a couple of weeks ago, a parent was uh, worried about some signage and stuff that's up at one of our high schools um, that um, I think it's political. Bob would probably think differently. <laughs> but um, you know, all these signages and stuff that go up at our high schools are supposed to be student related. So each year, I think these signs should come down so those new students that come in to join these groups can have their own agenda and push their own agenda on items that they think is important to them. The posters that are at, I'll just say, Grove City High School seem to never go down. Um, and they're supposed to have who's representing these posters, which is not on them at all. Um, I, I would just like to recommend that we should have these posters all taken down at the end of the year so the next group of children that come in and join these groups can vote on what they want to do, what the things they want to argue or support. Um, but it seems like they never come down. Also, on some of these signages, it talks about a safe place in classroom. I hope there's not a unsafe place at any of our schools for kids to go talk to anybody. So I think these, these signs are just dividing us where when I go to other schools, I like a universal message, respect, common courtesy, kindness. I love that when I go into schools for just a, a statement on of motivating these kids, but it seems like some of the schools we go there and it's divisive. And you might not say it's political, it's political. You know, um, I'm sure if we put up a, a faith based sign or something, it'd get torn down. And, and my son that graduated a couple of years ago that was very involved with Dogs for Christ, he said, if one of those signs were up, they'd get torn down. Now, if another sign got torn down, you'd probably get in trouble for it. You'd probably get expelled for it. It's just not treating everybody equally is my problem with this. But on the signs on the school, in the classrooms, before you walk in a safe place, I don't know, teachers are there to teach a certain subject. They're not licensed therapists. They're not so psychiatrists. You know, these kids should go to any teacher and if they have issues, they should be able to go and be directed to somebody that could help them out with whatever's going on. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I addressed, as Bob was saying, things that, that upset some of my constituents that talked to me, that voted for me, Bob, to put me in this seat, that we hide things from parents. And we do hide things from parents in the Southwest City School District, along with the property across our country under <laughs> Title IX, and it's wrong. I don't care what anybody tells me. If a kid's getting off a bus and, and changing into a dress and then changing back into his clothes to go home and we're not talking to his parents about it, that is an issue. If that was my kid, I would be very upset that teachers, administrators, principals aren't talking to me about this subject. You guys can disagree with me all you want, but parents should be involved in these kids' education and we're cutting them out because of Title IX. Now, we gotta start standing up to this because it's just nonsense. It is truly nonsense. 
Uh, you can tell how much it upsets me. And like Bob was saying, I do have a 15 year old daughter in this district. And I tell you what, I don't want her going in the bathroom with a boy. And there is only two genders, no matter what anybody tells me. And you guys can chastise me all there once. It's male and female. I don't want a boy going in to a bathroom with my daughter. And I've heard this from many other people. I heard girls don't even go to the bathroom because they don't want to go into it. And they get UTIs and stuff for holding themselves. So you know what? You don't know what a dog. Your Ladies, class act. It's out of order. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. Apologies. Anyways, so that's what I, I and also with the bulletins as far as signs being put up, I would like to put a motion out there that we just put a big bulletin board at every school where any organization puts their stuff there, not all over the school, just on that bulletin board, and it would solve a lot of problems. Thank you, Madam. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to address my colleagues comments. Chris, I understand part of what you're saying about the bulletin, when they should come down, when they should go back up. But I think all of our schools should be a place where every student has freedom to learn and they feel included. Uh, and unfortunately, and I know the poster you're talking about, I'm just going to talk about it, which is a, a rainbow heart poster that says, be proud. It's hanging on a locker at Grove City High School. Uh, I went and saw that, that poster for myself at Grove City High School, and honestly, I, I didn't see anything wrong with it, because I think the message that I was trying to say to the students of Grove City, or really any school in our district, is that you should feel welcome and safe and protected when you come here, regardless of who you are, who you love, uh, or anything else that's going on in your life, race, religion, anything else. Um, and, you know, we all grew up watching Reading Rainbow, some of you are a lot younger than me, but, you know, watch that. I didn't find anything offensive about that at the time. We have lots of colorful schemes in all of our schools that try to make sure that we're telling kids that we have inclusive environments. Uh, but at the end of the day, what, what we want to create in, in the PowerPoint we saw earlier, uh, it really kind of demonstrated is that we want this to be a place where kids can have a sense of belonging. Uh, and unfortunately, and, and there's lots of studies that I can share with you and others that specifically students that are lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, questioning, intersex, or asexual, have had a long history of feeling marginalized, uh, discredited, not loved, no sense of belonging. And that's led to self-harm. It's led to suicide. Uh, and it's left, led to a, a sense of isolation where they really don't feel like they, they can be themselves. School is the one great equalizer. And, and I think Mr. Ruth talked about this a little while ago is that the school is the one place that you can find community in whatever you want to do, whether it's Dogs for Christ or if it's the gay uh, G GSA organization, uh, Gay Straight Alliance within our schools. We have these organizations so the kids can have that sense of belonging. And so to say, to isolate one spot in the school, maybe in the cafeteria to say, this is the only place that you're going to see a poster, I really feel is, is not showing the level of inclusivity that we want to have for all of those organizations. And so when I'm going out the West Wing or Westland High School and I see a poster for Key Club, you know, or if I'm going out the East Wing uh, by the choir room and I see a GSA poster, we need to make sure that those messages are able to spread throughout the school so that every student, regardless of how they come or go to school, uh, can also receive them. And so I, I disagree with this notion of like one centered place for those kind of posters. Uh, it really does help kids feel a sense of belonging regardless of what their organization is. So I, I just disagree. You know, Anthony, I, I guess we should change our policy in the Southwestern City School District because all the posters should have who's sponsoring these posters, which isn't the case at, at the, the ones I see. But I, I, I still disagree with you with having them all over. And, and I do agree with you. Everybody, treat people with kindness. Treat people with respect. That's the things we should be pushing, I think. But I, I, I'm all... You believe what you want, and, and I agree with that. Everybody should, but it seems like it's getting pushed on people more than it should. Those, those signs that say safe space are there to tell students who don't feel like they have a safe place in school, that that is a place they can go and be safe. And so while we hope that every person who works in our district provides that safe and inclusive environment, there are some educators and other staff who 
you want to make sure that their students know that's a place that they can go and that's the point of those those stickers or posters that they have you know maybe on the window or on their door um, because they, they want those students to know that they have a place that they can come and then get referred to a resource that maybe they need if they're having any sort of issues or, or questions or comments about what's going on in the Christian school not just some of the you know other issues we face. Well I think it's sad that a student feels that every classroom isn't a safe space you know if it's not I think we should be getting rid of some teachers if they're not supporting whatever a student feels and getting them help because they shouldn't be a teacher but I just feel that when you're putting stickers on certain doors no the whole place should be a safe place in my mind that's where I'm coming from Anthony but I respect you Else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Caldwell. We need a second. Thank you, Mr. Martindale. Roll call. Mr. Caldwell. Yes. Mr. Martindale. Barroso. Yes. Schreiner. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Thank you all for coming. Travel safely home and have a great evening.